Hello everybody, welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we are going to see the news analysis of 12th December 2018. So these are the following topics which we are going to see for the today's analysis. So the first article for prelims is Infrastructure Development Investment Program for Boosting the Tourism. So this uh, development investment program was signed between Government of India and Asian Development Bank which is headquartered in Manila, Philippines. So in this ADB, Japan is the major stakeholder. So these two agencies have signed this loan agreement for $31 million to build up the state tourism industry and boost the visitor arrivals. So this focuses on the state tourism industry and thereby have an action oriented plan for developing the state tourism industries. So basically this investment program is related to improve the tourism infrastructure of the state governments. So this program have been started in the year 2010 in Punjab, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Followed this in 2018 Tamil Nadu have been selected for development in the tourism industry through this infrastructure development investment program. So through this program, it builds opportunities for the local communities and boosts the local economy thereby enhancing the tourism. So through this tourism investment initiative, the employment generation in the local community will be enhanced and thereby harness the potential of the rural youths. Not only this, but also it enhances to develop and preserving the sites of natural and cultural heritage thereby building a connectivity, capacity and infrastructure among the regions. As we all know, the service sector contribution for our GDP is about 60%. Tourism becomes one of the important element for contributing to the services sector. Having this in mind, the government of India has tagged this hospitality, travel and tourism are major drivers for growth and development. So based on this, the Niti Aayog have developed a national development agenda which is a 5 year plan which includes an action plan agenda for the year 2017-20. to 20. This national development agenda identify key areas for action including the infrastructure, marketing and skill development has the potential to increase the international tourist arrivals. So by leveraging India's cultural industries, it, ha it can have a global presence and thereby it would attract the number of tourist arrivals which leads to the service exports and growth of the Indian economy and this also promotes the rural employment generation. So the second article for today's analysis is sale of medicines online. So this has been taken from PIB. Okay. The age old drugs and cosmetics rules of 1945 has provisions to sell stock, exhibit or offer for sale or distribution of drugs. This drugs and cosmetics rule doesn't include the e-pharmacies. So what is this e-pharmacy is nothing but sale of medicines in the online platform. This e-pharmacy industry is less than 0.5% of the retail pharmacy landscape but now it is growing at an annual rate of over 100%. So it is need for regulating these e-pharmacies. Based on this, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has published a set of draft rules on the scale of drugs by e-pharmacies. This regulation is needed because of the potential dangers of the e-pharmacies. Some sell illegal or habit forming drugs through this online platform and some do not verify their prescriptions and regulators may not be able to effectively enforce these regulations against them because of the lack of a regulating platform. So now the e-pharmacies have to register with this central drug standard control organization under the Ministry of Health in order to come under the purview of this regulation. So the next article we are going to see is providing health for all. So this article has been taken from the paper Hindu. Developing the human capital of one country and thereby enriching the relationship of two soft powers like India and Japan becomes important. So here health becomes an important platform where cooperation shall be made thereby develop the human capital especially in the developing economies like India. December 12 that is today has been designated as Universal Health Coverage Day. 
So what is this universal health coverage? It is nothing but to ensure that everyone everywhere can access essential quality health services without facing financial hardship. So this is not a simple task for a country having a huge population like India. So why health is important? Only when there is an accountable and transparent system in delivering of this universal health coverage, it would improve the health outcomes and thereby it would reduce the poverty of the country which enhances the productivity of the country in terms of human as well as the manufacturing productivity and thereby increasing the jobs of the country which gives a financial protection to the people of the country so this becomes a greater equity which in turn improves the health outcome so this is a virtuous cycle developing countries like india should lead so based on this india has taken a vital first step towards this universal health coverage through its ambitious program of ayushman bharat also japanese experience indicates that this universal health coverage has deep positive impacts on health of the citizens so based on this india and japan have jointly collaborated polio eradication in india japan and india have also jointly collaborated in various other disease elimination programs also like control center on diarrhea which has been established by japan in kolkata also many children hospitals have been established in tamil nadu by japanese agencies so this emphasizes the india and japan relationship in the health platform in order to enhance this concerted efforts from the ministries of health finance and education is required not only but uhc has ensured social equity by functioning as a mechanism for the redistribution of incomes so the path towards uhc is not short but india has taken the first bold step and japan will march along with india on this path sharing its lessons as a friend so the next article for our analysis is the vision of a new india based on which a report has been released by the ministry of commerce and industries with the vision of making india a 5 trillion dollar economy before 2025 this ministry of commerce and industry has created an action oriented plan highlighting the specific sector in level interventions so the focused plans will be on boosting the service sector contribution to 3 trillion by 2025 and manufacturing sector to 1 trillion dollars and agriculture sector to 1 trillion dollars so for this the ministry of commerce and industry has identified some 12 champion sectors on which proactive initiatives has to be taken where thereby to achieve this 5 trillion economy by 2025 so some of the 12 champion sectors are tourism it and it enabled services transport and logistic services financial education and health services with the initiatives to be taken in these 12 champion sectors will enhance the competitiveness of india service sector through the implementation of the focused and monitored action plans not only but it will also promote the gdp growth of the country and create more jobs for the unemployed and also promoting exports to the global markets with a goal of achieving 4.2 percentage by 2022 so our prime minister in his speech he said that so these seven characteristics of india which comprises in knowledge democracy natural resources agriculture women empowerment youth power and india's rich cultural heritage will form the base for the india's development and making uh, the new india 2022 so in order to achieve this vision of new india by 2025 the ministry of commerce and industries has released agricultural export policy of 2018 this export policy has an aim to double the agricultural exports to over 60 billion dollars by 2022 upon which it will enable the farmers to get the benefit of export opportunities in the overseas market 
So this will help in the doubling of the farmer's income by 2022. For this, this policy has enabled a platform where the representatives from ministries, agencies and state governments will gather and oversee the implementation of the policy. So this initiative will promote the trading of ethnic, organic and traditional as well as non-traditional agri products. So the recommendations in agriculture export policy are in two categories which is strategic and operational. So the strategic element includes policy measures, infrastructure and logistic support, and greater involvement of state governments in agri-exports. So these should be focused in order to achieve this goal of doubling the agricultural exports. And the operational element includes focusing on the clusters, promoting the value added exports, And for this, marketing and promotion plays a vital important. Also, it focuses on R&D upon the agri-exports and establishment of a strong quality regimen in order to meet the standards of WTO. And thereby, it would attract the private investments into the production and processing of agri-exports. So, this vision of New India report by Ministry of Commerce and Industry also speaks about the need for trade infrastructure for export scheme. As we all know that the infrastructure and logistics parameters are vital for improving the India's exports. So for this, this ministry has pitched to bring in changes in the export infrastructure as well as the logistics sector. So in order to improvise the India's export system, the ministry has launched this a TIES scheme which means the trade infrastructure for export scheme. So this scheme will provide assistance for setting up and upgradation of the infrastructure projects by creating facilities like border hearts, land custom stations, quality testing and certification labs, cold chains, trade promotion centers, dry ports, export warehousing and packaging and special economic zones. So who and all are eligible for this financial support under this TIE scheme? So all central and state agencies including the export promotion councils will be benefited through this scheme. Also the commodity boards, special economic zone authorities and apex trade bodies recognized under the export and import policy of government of India will be eligible for the financial support under this TIE scheme. So the recently released Ease of Doing Business report of 2019 by World Bank India has shown a significant rise in its rank and now its position is at 77. So in order to improve this rank the Ministry of Commerce and Industry in collaboration with the World Bank has initiated an annual reform exercise for all states and union territories in the name of Business and Reform Action Plan. So this action plan program is launched in order to improve the delivery of various central government regulatory functions and services in an efficient, effective and transparent manner to the concerned states. So for this, the reform plan has been expanded from 285 to 372 action points this year. So this is a good initiative in order to improvise the state's performance in the ease of doing business. So in this state-wise ease of doing business, Andhra Pradesh tops followed by Telangana and Haryana.
So now we are going to see the status of Make in India campaign which was launched in 2014 and how far it is propelling the India's economy towards the state of manufacturing driven economic growth. So this Make in India campaign has been launched to, to transform the India into a manufacturing hub. This focuses on 25 focus sectors like automobiles, construction, IT and business processing management, pharmaceuticals and space. So what is India's performance in these areas? So India has improved in its global innovation index which was published by the World Intellectual Property Organization. It also moved 19 places ahead in the logistic performance index released by the World Bank and also shown some significant rise in the global competitiveness index released by World Economic Forum. So in order to harness maximum benefits through this Make in India campaign, Ministry of Commerce has made some efforts to ensure that in public procurement preference has been given to this Make in India program, where an exemption is given for them whose procurement is less than rupees 5 lakhs and a minimum local content shall be ordinarily a 50 percentage. So for this, the nodal ministry shall prescribe a higher or lower percentage for any item in this local content procurement. So the margin of purchase preference shall be made to 20 percentage. So in order to improvise the manufacturing sector, the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion under the Ministry of Commerce and Industries has created a public procurement cell to enable these manufacturing hubs in research and development. Also a standing committee has been established under the chairmanship of its secretary to oversee the implementation of the 2017 order giving the preference to Make in India products. So this enhances the public procurement through this Make in India platform. So as an action oriented plan to boost the manufacturing sector, so this Startup India campaign forms a flagship initiative which intends to build a strong ecosystem that is conducive for the growth of startup businesses. So according to DIPP, a startup is an entity which is headquartered in India that is having an annual turnover of less than 25 crores and not less than 7 years. So this 19 point action plan has three elements namely this having a simplified rules processes and compliance for the startups and having a funding support and enabling a tax incentive for the startups. So this would have a sustainable economic growth and generate large scale employment opportunities. As I have stressed initially this logistics becomes a vital element for enhancing the India's exports. The government has come up with a new initiative of setting up of multimodal logistic parks policy. So in this they have created a, a single window integrated platform for the logistic sector and the simplification and elimination of having a physical documents. So through this India logistics platform to have an efficiency enhancement and thereby having an increased competition among the players which will considerably widen the base of the exporters. Upon improvising this logistics platform, it will also promote the MSME sector which is contributing about 40% of the India's exports. It also improves transparency as it is a single window integrated platform and the standardization of service quality and traceability. So working upon these logistics sector will upon lowering over freight costs, it will increase the number of vehicles plying in the Indian roads. So this may amount to vehicular pollution and congestion. So but this was uh, addressed in the logistics sector policy of Ministry of Commerce. Also cutting the warehouse costs with a view to promoting the movements of goods for domestic and global trade. But as of now, this multimodal logistic park policy is in limbo which should be addressed as soon as possible to enable the Indian exporters to have an incentivized trade promotion platform. 
the improvement of ranks by India in the ease of doing business report of 2019 released by World Bank, it says that the construction permits and trading across borders in India have enabled an ease of doing business. So, this trading across borders should be further strengthened in order to improvise India's rank in future. For this, logistic support becomes important. As of now, the logistic cost of India is about 14%. But whereas in China, the logistic support is only 2% of its GDP. So, this 14% of GDP compliance has to be reduced to 10% by 2022 by working upon this logistic sector platform. For this, government has taken some initiative like developing of the logistic portal which is a national logistic portal which will serve as a transactional e-marketplace by connecting the buyers, logistic service providers and relevant government agencies. So this portal will also be a single window market to link all the stakeholders and thereby reducing the logistics cost considerably. Upon creation of national logistics portal, the ministry has also pitched for logistics data bank which is a technology innovation project of India-Japan bilateral cooperation to be implemented in the logistics sector. This logical data bank is nothing but an RFID tag which will be commissioned in all of its containers. So this will track the containers on a near real time basis. So this project of having the logistics data bank has already expanded to various ports in India and as of now it covers about 90% of total container volumes. So this should be made 100% in order to harness the potential from the logistic sector. New industrial policy which was brought in after 27 years following the 1991 industrial policy. So this new industrial policy focuses on three pillars like competitiveness, sustainability and inclusion. It also emphasizes on reducing the cost of doing business and thereby enable the startups and make in India program viable. This policy also proposes a GST council like body to take states along the policy promotions. This policy also proposes to establish a GST council like body which it takes states along with for policy promotions. So this pitches the cooperative federalism in India. This body will also facilitate key changes in labor and land areas. And in order to satisfy the electricity demands of the industries, this policy promotes for a DBT mechanism which is a direct benefit transfer mechanism to provide the power subsidies to these industries. So this national industrial policy will subsume the national manufacturing policy. So the objectives of this policy includes having global linkages and thereby improve its competitiveness and growing industries and widen the workforce and thereby generation of employments having sustainability in terms of economic as well as environmental aspects and technical adoption and innovation setups in these industrial policy. The Ministry of Commerce have also set up a committee under the leadership of Baba Kalyani in order to study the existing special economic zones. The study has to have the objectives of making this a special economic zone policy WTO compatible and maximizing the utilization of vacant lands in the special economic zones. It also pitches for international experience in the implementation of these special economic zone policy. So having these achieved through proactive steps by the government, so it will lead Indian economy to a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025. So by changing the current environment of manufacturing competitiveness and services, a paradigm shift has to be taken as soon as possible. Also in order to harness maximum benefits from the already established industrial corridors program, the ministry emphasizes on 
class infrastructure, connectivity and new greenfield smart cities which are going to serve as the global manufacturing hubs thereby creating large employment opportunities. So the industrial corridors which are extending between Delhi and Mumbai like Amritsar and Kolkata, Chennai Bengaluru, Bengaluru Mumbai Economic Corridor and East Coast Economic Corridor that connects Kolkata to Chennai has also to be improvised and it is also suggested to have such economic corridors in other regions and thereby enhance the Indian economic growth. So these are the focus areas identified by the government in its report. So proactive steps has to be taken to achieve the status of a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025. Thank you.